I would like, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. I think probably the people who are in the room actually have some stake. Like, why would you stay for the heat reuse economics when you could be getting a line for lunch? So my bet, <laughs> my bet is there are people here, like you're only here and not at the other thing because you genuinely have um, some interest. I'd like to do something just a little bit different before I start the slides then. Uh, I'm gonna ask for two favors. Uh, first, we put the slide deck together two months ago and I was guessing at who would be in the room and what you'd want to know. And I don't think I guessed. So I, if you think you're going to have questions at the end, and we will have questions and answers at the end, I'll make sure we clean up fast enough. Tell me now. What are the questions? What did you want to make sure that we had in the heat reuse economics tool presentation that you came to hear? What do you want to make sure that I've covered? And if you don't have any questions, then you're going to be in the awkward position of being behind me in line for lunch because then I'm done. Any, anyone expect to have any questions about what we've done with the heat reuse economics tool? Super. Then when we do get to the question and answer period, we're going to do something slightly different. I have questions for you. And as we go through the slides, you'll understand why. There's some things that we can't actually finish without information directly from people who are stakeholders who actually have some idea of how these things should be done. I know a couple of the people who were in the audience had the leave to go to a different thing. Uh, we'll be in close communication on how we're going to get the data that he was expecting us to be using. I haven't used that data. So nobody's going to have any questions at the end. Is that right? Super. Let me start the slides. Uh, let me start with a little bit of the journey. Um, uh, my counterpart, who is in... Uh, Europe right now, he's not able to be here, Dr. Petter Terranius uh, of Uppsala University. Uh, we've been working on this for about a month or a year, and a couple months into this, uh, we were kind of stumped. How do you make some kind of economics for accounting of all the possible heat suppliers and all the possible heat users and make that harmonious and user-friendly. I've sat in on some other work streams, TCO tool building exercises. Uh, for example, the one for immersion. And they've created a, an amazing tool. It's very, very comprehensive. But I think they're solving a little bit different problem. And I think they've solved it for someone else. Uh, I think we have to make whatever is our tool accessible to not necessarily highly skilled trained professionals who already know everything there is to know about these economics, the heat transfers, the, you know, all of these things, but probably for the people who are going to be developing the data centers and their advanced teams. So whatever we put up, we wanted to have be straightforward and simple and user friendly. By contrast, the uh, immersion TCO model is very, very precise, covers every possible uh, actuality, but I can't understand it. And I've, I've built immersion systems and I, I can't use the tool. So this is going to look very simple up front because we've only showed the part that's very simple. And uh, part of what we're gonna ask at the end is where we're, to, where we're supposed to take it. What's gonna be good for you? Part of what we studied was we went to that map that you've seen on the earlier slides. We took all that information from it, and I hesitate deliberately not calling it data, and I'll say why. And we also went to an organization that's being run by Benjamin Ott out of Stuttgart University called Bites to Heat, and we took all of the information that they had also combined. Some of these overlapped, and you can see on the far left column You'll get the QR code for this 
map later or this chart later. Uh, some, of the, some of these points are, show up in bytes to heat and in the map. The bytes to heat information was taken essentially from news, right? These are not necessarily scientific studies. They're just common knowledge information. The map information was taken from the map that had been provided, but the input, in order to get people to actually give some information when they probably didn't really have precise information, were given in ranges, for example. What's your temperature out to the user? Is it 20 to 30 or is it 30 to 40? Is it above 40? What'll happen later then, if you're trying to use that, those series of numbers for mathematics, there's a big difference between 30 and 40. So it's not really data. Maybe it's unstructured data. So one of the things that we did in looking at all of the known cases and all of what was known about the known cases, all the structured and unstructured data, was figured out that this is going to be ridiculously complex. We probably can't do it all at one time. You can't boil the ocean. So let's map it out so that it can be done in small composable pieces modularly so that the data could be submitted modularly, and so that anyone who wanted to do some contribution could do the part that they were familiar with or had access to the data, and it would all get harmonized into one system of smaller databases. And that's gonna come back, uh, I'm gonna ask questions about that. Right now, these things are in a spreadsheet. This one's in Excel. Uh, but if you use spreadsheets and you use them by different brands, they don't necessarily always translate back and forth. Um, I'm gonna have to speed up just a little bit. Here's what we've done. We take basic site information, and that might include, uh, yeah, let's go to the user. We ask the user about six things. I'll show you a front of, this, of, the, of the tool in a second. Uh, how much IT power is going to be available, what are the cooling methods. Somewhere else, you can see the green files, we have data already set aside. These are data that we actually need contributions on. I'll show you some examples. Here's what the user's front face might look like. These are just in beta tests. You saw this in the previous slides. So the inputs are based on this same information as given to us by the design team. And we've stayed within the guidelines of the design team. We're only looking from about one to five megawatts. That's another question I'm gonna ask you in a couple minutes, because that might not be the range that you have. Here's a closer look. The white squares are what we ask the user to put in. How much IT power is going to be harvested? What's the temperature that you're requiring at the IT? What do you think your flow rate will be? Oh, I've lost. What happened? Hello? It just died all on its own. Just need a, a few computer experts in the room, that's all. So we give some ranges for what the flow might be at those power arrangements. We ask them to target what they think their HRE should be on an ideal day. We're gonna ask what the heat exchanger approach is and we'll recommend a flow for that. From the work the design team has done, if we know what the power is and we would kind of know what the flow is, then we know what the temperature difference is going to be from those flows. We know what the pipe size needs to be. We know what the size of the room needs to be. So from just that much information, we can really kind of ballpark what is the cost value of the piping and all its associated arrangements. What we don't really know, and this is part of the use of the tool later on, is what will be the performance of the heat exchange device. And we've put in here 
an example approach of three and a half degrees C. I don't know what you're targeting. Three and a half is kind of maybe average, I don't know, but you could probably do better. If you do better, it'll be a bigger heat exchanger, it will cost more. If you do worse, it'll be a smaller heat exchanger, it'll cost less, but it will cost op more to operate over the life of the system. Where do we want the balance? And from, the <clears throat> from that much information, you can pretty much get enough ballpark information that you know more flow means bigger pipe, smaller flow means less. It's pretty simple from there. Simultaneously, we can do on another sheet what are the probable heat reuse uh, effectiveness. At the bottom, we have a adjustment. Let's go a little faster now so I don't lose up on my time. I'm down to two minutes. Um, we know that the data center isn't on full tilt all day, every day. We know that the heat user isn't on full tilt all day, every day. So there are adjustments to be made. There are separate pages for that. What we need, we need real data instead of uh, marketing level data. We need operation data. We need performance data of equipment that we might be used. Um, let me, our next meeting is uh, the 14th of November. And uh, let's see. You can find some of the tools here. So let me ask the audience a couple of questions before they uh, take me off, because it's just about my time. Um, are spreadsheets the right way to do this, or should we graduate to something a little more sophisticated? Anyone have an opinion on that? Let me ask an easier one. Should the heat exchanger be 304 stainless or 316 stainless? Does it matter to anyone? should be titanium. We need good heat exchangers. Some feel that, um, I think, I'm not a metallurgist, but 304 might give you better heat transfer perform performance, but might not work so well, uh, might not give you the same life expectancy as a 316. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyone have an opinion on that? Great. I know. So what would be the better material? What fluid are you going to use? So gray water, perhaps. OK, so you have gray water on one side. What's your treatment level? They have water to water. A lot of the people that you've seen earlier this morning, if you've been in the room all day, a lot of people think 25% propylene glycol on one side, water on the other side. It's not what I would do, but it's what everybody's doing, so we have to make the tool account for it. What's the pressure drop that we should have across the heat reuse station, whether it's the one the design team showed or whether it's a CDU? What do we think we should allow for a pressure drop? One bar, a bar and a half. Okay. I don't know if there's another. I thought it was on here. So one of the things that we've done then, uh, if you go follow these uh, QR codes, you're going to go to GitHub. In the past, a lot of our files have been in uh, a Google Drive and that might not be as accessible for everyone. Uh, and it might not be as easy to uh, contribute. But from GitHub, you know how programmers would use it. You know, like you'll go to GitHub, you'll download a version of it, you'll make whatever recommendations or changes you want to do and submit that up. So that's pretty quick and easy for pretty much anyone. Anyone disagree with that? Anyone think we should not use GitHub? Okay. Any last questions? Any last answers? Is there anything else we can do for you in creating the economics tool? I'm going to lunch.
Thank you. Thank you very much.